Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in five minutes from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your five-minute time check, stations. Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in two minutes from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your two minute time check, stations. Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in one minute from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your one minute time check, stations.
on the Hawkeye Sports Network. From Learfield, Hawkeye Baseball is on the air. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by Homewood and Home 2 Suites, preferred hotel of the Hawkeye Radio Network, Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association, and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. When corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Oak Knoll, an active life care community by University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. And by Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Now live, this is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. From Centennial Park in Port Charlotte, Florida, it's time for Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Live from the Snowbird Baseball Classic, it's the Quinnipiac Bobcats and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Game two of three for the Hawkeyes down here in Florida and Iowa will look to build on their dramatic win from yesterday over Indiana State. A 6-2 winner in the 11th inning following a walk-off grand slam by Kyle Huxdorf. Let's go over some of the highlights of yesterday's game against Indiana State. Ty Langenberg got the start for the Hawks, tabbed as the Friday starter. Indiana State, however, got on the board first with a pair of two-out base runners. They did that in the first inning. Iowa would answer with two runs of their own in the bottom of the second. First, a solo home run from Kyle Peterson, and then an RBI double from Sam Honar. Indiana State would tie the game again in the fourth inning, making it 2-2. The game would remain tied until the 11th inning, when Kyle Huxdorf launched a walk-off grand slam over the left field wall. Iowa had been hitless from the third inning until the 11th, but relied on an outstanding bullpen relief from Jared Simpson and Will Christofferson. As we take a look at the box score from yesterday, Iowa 6, Indiana State 2. Michael Seegers, he led things off for the Hawkeyes. He was 2 for 4 yesterday. He did strike out once. Raider Tello was the third baseman, batted second for the Hawks, was 1 for 5 with a run scored for the Hawkeyes. Designated hitter Keaton Anthony, he batted third. He went 0 for 4 yesterday but did score a run. He was one of the base runners for the Grand Slam from Kyle Huxdorf. Brandon DeRiggi got his first start as a Hawkeye over at first base. He was one for four yesterday. He walked once. He also had a run scored. Sam Peterson, he batted fifth for the Hawks out in left field, was one for five yesterday. Had a run scored, had an RBI as well. He hit that solo home run that got Iowa on the board to start the day. Kyle Huxdorf was two for five. He was the star of the game offensively for the Hawks yesterday. Had two runs scored, four RBIs. He struck out once but had that grand slam that won it for Iowa in the bottom of the 11th inning. Sam Honar was one for four with that RBI double. Cade Moss, he was one for four as well. Chase Mosley batted ninth for the Hawkeyes. He was 0 for four looking for his first hit as a Hawkeye. The pitching staff did all right yesterday. Did enough to get the win. Ty Langenberg got the start. Five innings pitched. Gave up five hits. Two earned runs. He walked two but struck out six. Threw uh, 76 pitches, rather. And he faced 23 batters. Jared Simpson came in first in relief. Threw four innings. Gave up one hit. He walked two, but he struck out seven. Was outstanding out of the bullpen in those four innings for the Hawkeyes. Jared Simpson. Will Christofferson gets the win for Iowa. He threw two innings. He walked two, and he struck out three. Really settled in nicely. Christofferson gets the win. Fenlong gets the loss for Indiana State. He threw five and two-thirds in relief, gave up four earned runs, all of which came on the walk-off grand slam in the 11th inning. Matt Jasek was the starter for Indiana State. He threw five innings, gave up five hits, two earned runs, and he struck out five Hawkeyes. Following the break, we talk with Sean McGrath, assistant and pitching coach for the Hawkeyes, as our pregame show from Port Charlotte continues right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. When you're in the eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. We all love a good win, 
Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular and the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Bring some fresh energy to our lineup uh, today and, uh, and go from there. But it's just a matter of mental toughness and being able to get up early and, and, and get, get going. And, you know, the home team's great, but unfortunately, when you play a, a, a morning game, that means you're out here two and a half hours before game time because you have to hit first. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize that you're you're at the ballpark a long time, and we were we were at the ballpark a long time yesterday. So uh, you just hope that you're in shape and your training is going to pay off, and that your guys are going to be mentally tough to go out there and give a professional effort. You mentioned a couple changes in the lineup as the bottom half of the order, but guys with experience that are playing, with the exception of Gable Mitchell, we'll see him the first time. Yeah, exactly. Gable will get his first, first action. And that's a Hawkeye today. And, you know, ben Tallman and Brayden Frazier, two veterans. Um, you know, we'll give Kate, Kate Mustin a really nice job yesterday. Had a good game and, and, and caught a good game. And, uh, you know, 11 innings. Week one, it makes sense to, to give Kate a break, at least starting out this game. And, uh, wind blowing in from right field, and you know, kind of made a made a little sense to, to give Sam Honar uh, a break. And you know, he's, he's always dealing with his lower back issues that, that we have to be careful of and not, not, not get him not get him down when he's feeling good. So those those all those all I think make good sense and, and we'll go from there. Brody gets the start for your team today. Talk about Brody. Well, I mean, elite level ability and uh, a great competitor. Uh, the, the hope is that the maturity is there, where he can just go out and play baseball and and not not put a lot of uh, a lot of pressure on himself to, to to just be the absolute lights out guy. Just go out and pound strikes and let, let the defense work behind you. And if he just pounds the strikes, we're going to have success with his stuff for sure. Keys to a Hawkeye victory today, Coach. Um, well, the, the big keys today. Um, are free bases. You got the wind blowing in 20 miles an hour. You know, a, a dramatic difference from the last two days when we were down here where the wind was howling out, south wind blowing. We had cold front come through last night, and it is blowing straight in your face, and runs are going to be at a premium, so freebies are magnified. And, and whenever you get a day where the wind's blowing in like this, uh, it definitely is a neutralizer um, between a, a good team and a, and a team that's not maybe as talented. I mean, it really neutralizes the game. And we're going to have to... Uh, Coach, thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks a lot, John. There you have it, Coach Rick Heller on our pregame show from Port Charlotte, Florida. A breakdown of Quinnipiac, starting lineups, and first pitch coming up right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blam.
demo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye baseball from Port Charlotte, Florida. It's time to talk with the head coach, Rick Heller. Coach, just a final thought from that dramatic win yesterday. Yeah, what a great day. I mean, when you, when you come down week one, uh, you can only hope to be in a, in a ball game like that. You know, two good teams going at it. I mean, it seemed like midseason form. And, um, you know, every pitch meant something. And the benefits of playing in games like that and then to come out on top. emphasize that bullpen. Do you feel like the bullpen really is one of your strengths this year? Well, I mean, you hope so. We'll find out these next two days and how that goes. But, you know, you had to use, you had to use uh, two of your better guys yesterday. And then Noah, who's going to be one of our guys, he was hot twice this week. Uh, he's going to be on the board today, which is going to hurt us. But uh, Jacob Anderson was able to he, – he got up early and then sat back down. So, I mean, I think so for sure. I mean, a lot of – Saturday, Sunday's games, if, if they can give us, you know, two, three, four really strong innings uh, with Volker and Anthony behind them, I mean, that really helps them move in time, because basically you're looking at four, four starters there, and then use the regular bullpen guys if possible, but I think as the season goes on, I mean, the hope would be that between Langenberg and Simpson, you can get through the right game without using anybody else a lot of times, which would be ideal, and then you'd have a in post game yesterday maybe a couple of things to, to clean up what what are those things on your mind to, to clean up in these next couple of games oh we, we we messed up a relay alignment in the first inning that cost us a run um, you know it was kind of a, a blooper down the right field line and, and, and the runner scored all the way from first because we assumed that he was going to stop the third and through the second and, uh, you know, just some outfield stuff that um, you know, we misplayed some balls we moved on some balls and then um I think we had some guys go into survival mode in the middle innings where they weren't getting their wrestlings off, and just a lot of things to a lot of things to learn uh, from in that ball game. And um, 
missed a couple signs. <laughs> I mean, just, you know, you know, there was some, definitely some things that we needed to clean up. I mean, runners running third, less than two outs, and we don't get to run in in, in, a, in, a, in a close ball game. So, you know, a lot of things we talked about, and hopefully we can start today, start fresh, and clean some of that up. Talking with Coach Heller prior to this morning's game with Quinnipiac, let's turn our attention briefly to the opponent today, the Bobcats. What do we know about them? see the best that Quinnipiac has and, and and the thing I know about them is um, you know their, their coach does an awesome job they play really hard um, they're a scrappy team um, you know they're gonna run steal bases I mean, they're, gonna, they're, 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 they're just like um, coach Delaney I mean they the way he played is how they play and they play really hard and you know anytime you play somebody uh, opening day you're gonna get their best effort and so uh, it's gonna be a good challenge for us to see if we can go out and match that energy uh, of the quick turnaround does that change anything preparation wise or just a matter of getting out there and playing well you know we're if you saw the lineup we're gonna we're gonna play bring some fresh energy to our lineup uh, today and uh, and go from there but it's just a matter of mental toughness and being able to get up early and, 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 get, and get going and you know the home team's great but unfortunately when you play a, a, a morning game that means you're out here two and a half hours before game time because you have to hit first and, you know, a lot of people don't realize that you're you're at the ballpark a long time and we were we were at the ballpark a long time yesterday so uh, you just hope that you're in shape and your training is going to pay off and that your guys are going to be mentally tough to go out there and give a professional effort you mentioned a couple changes in the lineup it's the bottom half of the order but guys with experience that are playing with the exception of gable mitchell will see him for the first time yeah exactly gable will get his first first action then as a hawkeye today and, you know, with ben tallman and brayden frazier two veterans and, Kate Moss did a really nice job yesterday, had a good game and, and, and caught a good game. And, uh, you know, 11 innings in week one, it makes sense to, to give Kate a break, at least starting out this game. And uh, wind blowing in from right field, and, you know, kind of made a made a little sense to, to give Sam Honar uh, a break. And, you know, he's, he's always dealing with his lower back issues that we have to be careful of and not, 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 get, him, not get him down when he's feeling good. So those, those all, those all sense and, and we'll go from there. Brody gets the start for your team today. Talk about Brody. Well, I mean, elite level ability and uh, you know, great competitor. Uh, the, the, the hope is that the maturity is there where he can just go out and play baseball and, and not, not put a lot of uh, a lot of pressure on himself to, to, to just be the absolute lights out guy. Just go out and pound the strikes and let, let the defense work behind you. And, you know, if he just pounds the strikes I mean, we're going to have success with his stuff for sure. Keys to a Hawkeye victory today, Coach. Um, well, the, the big keys today um, are free bases. You got the wind blowing in 20 miles an hour. You know, a, a dramatic difference from the last two days when we were down here where the wind was howling out, south wind blowing. We had cold front come through last night, and it is blowing straight in your face, and runs are going to be at a premium, so freebies are magnified. And, and whenever you get a day where the wind's blowing in like this, uh, it definitely is a neutralizer um, between a, a good team and a, and a team that's not maybe as talented. I mean, it really neutralizes the game. And we're going to have to... Uh, Coach, thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks a lot, John. There you have it, Coach Rick Heller on our pregame show from Port Charlotte, Florida. A breakdown of Quinnipiac, starting lineups, and first pitch coming up right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. 
We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Walters and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. Let's take another look at Quinnipiac here before setting the lineups and getting to first pitch. The Bobcats are led by head coach John Delaney in his ninth season. The Bobcats were 15 and 33 last season, 8 and 15 in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, the MAAC. This will be the first meeting between the Bobcats and the Hawkeyes. We've got a few players to note for the Bobcats. We'll start with Kyle Maves. He returns. Uh, as a grad student for his fifth season, last season he had a career-high 275 batting average. Career-high marks in 2022, 50 hits, 8 doubles, 41 runs scored, 22 RBIs, 23 stolen bases. He led the team with three triples in 2022. Over his career, Maves has 47 steals, which ranks him third in the program's Division I record, record books, for steals. That's Kyle Maves. I'll have to watch him on the base paths this morning. Jared Zimbardo, he's a junior for Quinnipiac. He batted a career best 307, boasted 50 hits and an on base percentage of 380 last season. Recorded a career high in runs scored with 28, 11 doubles, two triples, six home runs, hit 24 RBIs, and seven stolen bases over his career. He had 50 hits which are tied for third on the team last season. We'll have to watch we'll have to watch for Zimbardo today. Other standout player for the Bobcats, Anthony Denofrio. Denofrio was the lone Quinnipiac player to earn all MAAC preseason honors coming into this season. Last year he earned all MAAC second team honors as an outfielder. Denofrio batted 343 in 2022, boasting a team best 61 hits while adding 11 doubles, 7 homers, 2 triples, and he batted in 25 runs for the Bobcats. He was a menace on the base paths as well, stealing 15 bags last season. Over 9 innings pitched, he averaged 9 strikeouts, just over uh, 4 innings of work. Uh, nine strikeouts per nine innings pitch, that would be, in his four innings. D'Onofrio closed the 2022 campaign in solid fashion, batting over 390 in his final 23 games of the season. And during that span, he totaled six homers with six doubles, 13 RBIs, and 25 runs scored. Starting pitcher today for the Bobcats will be Jimmy Hagan. As a junior in 2022, he was an MAAC All-Academic Team honoree. He went 2-0 with a 4.50 ERA in nine appearances as a junior. He recorded 10 strikeouts over 16 innings pitched. Career stats for Hagan, 3-3 three three overall with three starts but 14 appearances. This is opening day for Quinnipiac, and so they'll be throwing their Friday starter here on Saturday in Port Charlotte, Florida, in Jimmy Hagan. We'll get a look at him in just a few minutes. All right, that'll do it for pregame coverage from Centennial Park. When we return, it'll be time for starting lineups and first pitch. Game two of the 2023 season coming to you right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. 
Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Welcome back to Centennial Park, live from Port Charlotte, Florida. We're here for game number two with the Iowa Hawkeyes this season. This is the Iowa Hawkeyes, the Quinnipiac Bobcats. I'm John Leo. Starting lineups have just been announced. As teams are within their dugouts, getting ready for first pitch here from Fort Charlotte, Florida. We'll have starting lineups for you in just a moment as we're approaching the National Anthem. We'll let you tune into the National Anthem. We're in an outdoor setup here today and naturally quite windy here in western Florida. It is about 70 degrees with the wind of about 20 miles an hour. All right, it's time for the National Anthem. We'll stand by and let you tune in to today's National Anthem. There you have it, today's national anthem in the books as we get sent for first pitch between Quinnipiac and Iowa. It's time to set today's starting lineups. We'll start with the away team, the Bobcats from Quinnipiac. They'll lead things off with Kyle Maves. We talked about him in pregame. He's one of their players to watch. He'll start at second base for the Bobcats. Jared Zimbardo, he's another of the Bobcats to watch out in center. He'll bat second. Anthony D'Onofrio is in right field batting third. Keegan O'Connor is the catcher, and he'll bat cleanup for Quinnipiac today. McGuire Tuffy is the third baseman, and he'll bat fifth. Sebastian Mueller is at first batting sixth. Seven, eight, nine for Quinnipiac. Matt Tesoriero, Matt DeRosa, and Braden Seabird. Tesoriero is their designated hitter. DeRosa is the shortstop. Seabird is out in left field. For the Hawkeyes, they'll go with Brody Brecht on the mound. Getting his start for the Hawkeyes. The sophomore right-handed pitcher, 6'4", 205 pounds from Ankeny, dual sport athlete, also plays football for the Hawkeyes. Last season, Brecht was 1-3 and three in 17 appearances, had a 3.18 ERA, over 22 and two-thirds innings pitched. He had 44 strikeouts, and he's the projected number one Big Ten athlete for the MLB draft coming up. He will push triple digits, Hawkeye fans, as he's getting his warm-up pitches in as we speak. The away team, Quinnipiac, they've got navy blue baseball helmets, gold uniforms 
with navy blue Quinnipiac spelled out across the chest. White pants with a blue stripe down the side. The Hawkeyes will go gold, black, and white today. Gold baseball caps with a black bill. The black block eyes on the front of their ball caps. Black uniforms with the gold Iowa in Iowa print across the chest with the numbers right below. The Hawks have white baseball pants with a black and white stripe down the side, slightly resembling the Pittsburgh Pirates. Defensively for the Hawkeyes on the infield, at first base is Brennan Derigi. Gable Mitchell is at second. Shortstop is Michael Seegers. Third baseman is Raider Tello. In the outfield from left to right, Sam Peterson is in left. Kyle Huxdorf is in center. Getting the start today in right field is Braden Frazier, one of the team captains. Brody Brecht is on the mound, and his battery mate is Ben Tallman. Getting ready for first pitch here from Port Charlotte, Florida. Not in the same ballpark we were yesterday at Indiana State, where the Hawkeyes won 6-2 in 11 innings. Today we're outdoors, right behind home plate, right along the fence. So we'll get a ground-level view of today's game. Outdoors is nearly 70 degrees, quite windy today in Florida. Wind blowing directly into our face here in the broadcast setup. Kyle Maves, left-handed batter, is in the box. Brody Brecht is on the mound, ready for the first pitch. Looks in, and here it comes. Oh, and outside for a ball, 1-0 to start today's game. First pitch at 10.01 Central Time. Next pitch on the way from Brecht. On the ground, right back to him. Brecht snags it, jogs over to first, and flips it to DeRiggy, out number one. Start for Brecht. Solid contact there by Maves. Jared Simbardo up next, center fielder for the Bobcats. Center fielder, number five. He's Jared. a right-handed batter. Stands 5'11", weighs 187. Center field today. One away in the top of the first inning. First pitch from Brett. Low and outside, skims the dirt. Ball one. Brett looks in. Brings the glove from his belt to his face. Now to wind up the pitch. This is nubbed off the end of the bat. Foul to the right side, one and one. One ball, one strike, one ball, one strike, one out. In the top of the first inning, Quinnipiac getting their first look at Brody Brecht on the mound for the Hawks. 1-1 one, one pitch is on its way to Zimbardo. Check swing. Home plate umpire says, yes, he did go around. Strike two. One ball, two strikes. Brecht is ready to pitch. Here it comes. On third strike. Got him on an off speed right down the middle. And Zimbardo goes down on strikes for out number two. First strike out of the day for Brett. Anthony D'Onofrio. And now brings up right fielder Anthony D'Onofrio. Left-handed hitter for Quinnipiac. Two away in the top of the first. That's ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Breaking ball, called strike, down the heart of the plate, started outside, broke back to the middle. Owen wins the count, Breck moving quickly now, he's ready with the next pitch. It's on its way. Lifted in the air to left, fouling out of play. Owen 2 Breck looking for a 1-2-3 inning. He can get D'Onofrio right here. Breck with an angled stance on the first Base side of the rubber. Ready with the 0-2. Here it comes. Breaking ball misses high. Brecht will try again, this time at 1-2. and two. Looks in for the sign from his catcher, Ben Tallman. Ready with the 1-2. Here it comes. Foul tip. Tallman couldn't quite snag it. We'll do it again at 1-2. and two. Afrio hit 343 last year. Breck's got him in a good position right now 
One ball, two strikes, two outs in the top of the first. Brody looks in for the sign. He's got it. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. Correct with two strikeouts in the inning. And the Bobcats go down one, two, three in the top of the first. We'll give you the Hawkeye starting lineup. Uh, the batting order coming up right after this. Bottom of the first. Here we go. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Welcome back to Hawkeye Baseball from Centennial Park in Fort Charlotte, Florida. Before we get to you, I have the defensive alignment for Quinnipiac, but pause 10 seconds for station identification. Pausing 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. All right, today's batting order for the Hawkeyes looks pretty similar in the top uh, six. It has a few changes, seven, eight, nine. The Hawkeyes are led off by Michael Seeger, the shortstop. Raider Tella will bat second in the third base spot. Keaton Anthony is the designated hitter. He bats third. Four, five, six for Iowa is the same as yesterday. Brennan Derigi at first. Sam Peterson bats fifth in left. Kyle Huxdorf's in center batting sixth. 7-8-9 is different for the Hawkeyes today. Brady Frazier getting the start. He'll bat seventh. Ben Tallman, the catcher, will bat eighth. And Gable Mitchell gets his first start, the freshman, as a Hawkeye. At second base, he'll bat ninth. Pitcher today for Quinnipiac is their Friday pitcher. It is Jimmy Hagan. Hagan last year, as a junior, Went 2-0 with a 4.50 ERA in nine appearances. Recorded 10 strikeouts and 16 innings pitched. Over his career, he's 3-3 three and three with three starts, 14 appearances for Hagen. He is a right-handed pitcher. And he'll tow the rubber. Getting ready to pitch to Michael Seegers to lead off the bottom of the first inning. After Quinnipiac went down 1-2-3 in the top half. First pitch to Seegers is low and inside for a ball. Next pitch on its way to Seegers, also inside. Ball two now. Seegers was two for four yesterday. Looking to get on early for the Hawks in the bottom of the first. 2-0 2-0 pitch on its way from Hagen. Seegers takes it, called strike, inside portion of the plate. 2-1 the count. Right-handed batter Seegers steps in, swings at the next pitch, fouls it off. 2-2 two and two now. Quinnipiac out in the field with navy blue ball caps. Big Q on the front. They've got gold bills. Gold vest-like uniforms with blue undershirts. Right pants. Two balls, two strikes to Seegers. This one's lined deep into left center field, going back all the way to the wall. Reaching up and making a timing catch is the left fielder, Seberg. What a grab in the left center gap as he approached the wall. He dove at the last second and that wall to rob Seegers of extra bases. One away for the Hawks in the bottom of the first. Now that for the Hawkeyes. Third baseman, number 28, Raider. 
Tello. Here comes Raider Tello, third baseman for Iowa, bat second today. He was one for five yesterday with a run score. Handed batter with a slightly open stance, stands in, first pitch, hits him. Breaking ball that didn't break, and Tello takes it on the shoulder, sprints down to first base, and the Hawkeyes have their first base runner of the morning. Well, Hawkeyes designated hitter number seven, Keaton Anthony. Brings up Keaton Anthony now. Designated hitter with a runner on first. Keaton was 0 for 4 yesterday. The run scored. He was hit by a pitch. Hagan's in the stretch now. Runner on first is Tello. First pitch to Anthony. Way inside. Backed him up off the plate. Keaton with a long black arm sleeve on his left arm. Got his white baseball pants pulled up just below his knees, showing his black and gold Hawkeye socks. one oh pitch to Anthony inside on the knees. 2-0. Hagan trying to find the strike zone early on for the Bobcats. Out of the first inning, scoreless. I always got a runner on first in Raider Tello. Anthony with the black and red bat in his hands, bright white batting gloves. 2 0 pitch to Anthony. Right down the middle, called strike. Didn't want to offer at that one. It's 2 and 1. Two balls, one strike to Anthony. Pitch is on its way. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. Floated in and then dropped off the table. A bit low. Keaton offered at it. Counts two and two. One away. Bottom of the first inning. Two balls and two strikes. The pitch to Anthony. This one skips in the dirt. It's low. Keaton holds off that one. Counts full now. Three, two, one. Three balls, two strikes, one out. Brendan DeRiggi is on deck for the Hawkeyes. Hagan looks in from the stretch. Ready with the three, two on its way to Anthony. Runner's going, doesn't matter. Ball four. Anthony draws the walk, and he's on. Here's Brennan DeRiggi now for the Hawks. First baseman, left-handed batter. DeRiggi yesterday was one for four with a run scored. Also walked. Brennan DeRiggi! Stand in from the left-handed batter's box. Runners on first and second for Iowa. One out in the bottom of the first. First pitch on its way to DeRiggi. Outside corner called strike. Hagan gets ahead in the count now. Iowa threatening in the bottom of the first after setting down Quinnipiac. One, two, three in the top half. Hagan set with the 0-1. It's on its way to DeRiggi. Another called strike. This is a changeup. 0-2 oh, now. Brennan can put the ball in play. Choke up on the bat. Oh, and 2 pitcher comes. Just outside, away from DeRiggi for a ball. One and two. Second baseman for Quinnipiac thought that it's good enough for a called strike, but just off the plate. One and two now. Next pitch is on its way. This one is just high. A changeup that had a little bump to it. Riggy lays off. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Runner still on first and second for the Hawks. 
Hagen looking in for the sign. Still looking, taking his time. Now he's got it, ready with the 2-2. Swing and a miss. Breaking ball, Zerigi chased it out of the zone, and he is out number two. Two way now for the Hawks. In the bottom of the first. Sam Peterson will step in. He had a home run yesterday. Left fielder, Sam Peterson. Ended up one for five. Hagan ready with the first pitch to Peterson. It's on its way. Inside, backed him up off the plate. Right-handed batter Peterson has to scoop back away from that one. All one. Two on, two out for the Hawks in the bottom of the first, trying to get on the scoreboard first. Next pitch to Peterson. Tap back to the pitcher. Foul ball. Peterson falls to the dirt around home plate. Foul it off his foot. One ball, one strike for Peterson. Umpire will bring out his mini brush and swipe off home plate. Give Peterson a bit more time to feel better and get back into the box. One ball, one strike, two outs. Runners on first and second for the Hawks. Threatening in the bottom half of the first. Hagen ready with the 1-1. It's on its way to Peterson. Breaking ball. Nice pitch. Called strike on the inside corner. One and two. If Hagen goes back to that breaking ball or confuses Peterson with a different pitch. One ball, two strikes. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. Got him on a curved ball. And hold on, they say foul ball. Hold on a minute. Foul ball. Peterson able to get a piece of it. Boy, everybody reacted as though that was a strikeout, but it was a foul ball. And so Peterson has new life. One ball, two strikes still, two outs. Runners on first and second to see if Peterson can make them pay here. Hagan looks in for the sign. He's got it now. Pitch to Peterson. This time they got it. Same pitch. Peterson couldn't do anything about it. And he goes down on strikes to end the first inning. A couple of strikeouts there for Hagan in that first inning. And we'll head to the second with Quinnipiac coming up to bat. Scoreless after one. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Knoll, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oaknoll.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skoglin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit the Hotel at Kirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Iowa. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. Top of the second from Fort Charlotte, Florida, Central Park. 
You want to see that coming to bat. Four, five, six. Keegan O'Connor will lead things off against Brody Breck. The catcher. Right-handed batter stands six foot tall, 205 pounds. First pitch from Brett, called strike on the outside corner. He works ahead of the count. 0 and 1. Connor stands in. A one pitch on the ground to the right side. And nice play there by Mitchell to throw it over to first in time. From second to first, Mitchell had a lot of ground to cover. Able to turn the corner, get in front of the ball, and whip it over to Dorigi at first for out number one. The next we first base, number four, Puffy McGuire. Third baseman up for the Bobcats now. McGuire Tuffy steps in. Left-handed hitter. First pitch from Brent on its way. Breaking ball, missing high for a ball. Tuffy stands in at 5'8", 165. 1-0 pitch on its way. Swing and a miss. Brent really pumped that one in there. One ball, one strike. One and one pitch on its way. This is downstairs. Yeah, pretty particular with their discipline. Trying to make Brody throw a few more pitches. Two balls and a strike. Pitch on its way. This is high at eye level. Three and one. You don't have to work back into the count here. Top of the second, scoreless between Quinnipiac and Iowa. 3 1 pitch, swing and a miss. Nice pitch, inner half of the plate. Count's now full. Let's see if Brody can go after Tuffy here and take him down. Brody looks in. Three balls, two strikes, one out. Here is the pitch. Line drive into the gap in right field. Right fielder Frazier is there. Right to him, and he makes the grab. Out number two. Flies out to right. First baseman. Two in the top of the second. We'll see Sebastian Mueller, first baseman now. Mueller. Right-handed hitter. 6-1-2-15 in New Jersey. First pitch is a breaking ball called strike. A ball's and a strike from Brecht to Mueller. Same spot, same pitch, same result. Called strike. Oh, and two now on Mueller. Brecht can go for another strikeout here. Two breaking balls. Let's see what he comes up with here. The 0 2 inside. Ball one. One ball, two strikes. Bases are M2 outs in the top of the second. Pitch on its way from Brecht. Called third strike. Put a fastball right by him on the outside corner. And again, Quinnipiac goes down one, two, three. This time in the top of the second. See the Hawks can manufacture some runs in the bottom half of the inning. Coming up right after this, listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, 
You deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. It'll be 6-7-8 for the Hawkeyes in the bottom of the second inning. Kyle Huntsdorf will lead things off. The star of the show yesterday with the walk-off grand slam in the 11th inning to beat Indiana State. He'll lead it off in the bottom of the second, followed by Braden Frazier and Ben Tallman. If any Hawkeye base runner gets on, we'll see Gable Mitchell, the nine-hitter, uh, come up to the plate for the Hawks. Scoreless game in the bottom of the second between Quinnipiac and Iowa. Bobcats have sent six batters to the plate in the first two innings with no reward yet. 0 for 6 with three strikeouts. The Hawks have had a couple of base runners. Raider Tello was hit on the shoulder in the first inning. Keaton Anthony followed with a walk. Ultimately, the Hawks were unable to score in the first inning. We'll see what they can do here in the second. Kyle Huckstorff steps in. He was 2 for 5 yesterday with two runs. Four RBIs. First pitch to him. Is on the ground and just foul down the third base line. Huckstorf was first pitch swinging. Hagan ready with the 0 1 to Huckstorf inside, almost hit him. He's trying to back the Iowa hitters off the plate. His first few go rounds. One ball and a strike to Huckstorf. Breaking ball. Nice pitch. Called strike on the inside corner. Started at Huckstorf's shoulder. Buckled right in. One ball and two strikes now to Kyle. The wind up in the pitch. This is at eye level. Ball two. Fastball in there, but high. Two balls, two strikes. Pitch on its way to Huckstorf. This one's inside. Almost hit him as well. From our vantage point right behind home plate, just to the left of it, we saw the ball pop behind Huckstorf, and then it bent right in, right at the belt buckle. Almost hit him. Counts full to Kyle. Three balls, two strikes. Nobody on, nobody out here in the bottom of the second. Scoreless game. The pitch to Huckstorf on the ground. Foul towards the Iowa dugout down to the third base line. We'll do it again with a full count. Three balls, two strikes. Hagan looks down at his glove. Now he's ready. The full count pitch. The wind and the pitch. This one's lined into left field. Shallow, and it'll drop in front of the left fielder for the first hit of the ball game. This is a single for Kyle Huckstorf. And he's on in the leadoff position for the Hawks. Here comes Braden Frazier, team captain, right fielder, getting his first start of the season. Hawkeye right fielder, number four, Bucky Frazier. Frazier is a redshirt junior, six feet tall, 195, career hitter, 249, with 15 doubles and a home run. Played in 79 games. This is his 80th game as a Hawkeye. Run first, Frazier's a right-handed batter. Hagan is back into the stretch. They'll check on the runner at first. That's Huckstorf. He dives back in safely. Frazier with a even stance in the box. First pitch to him. He squares the bunt. Now pulls it back. It's a breaking ball. Called strike on the inside corner. See what the Hawks elect to do with the wind blowing in at about 15 to 20 miles an hour. Line drives, fly balls to the outfield will sink and, and dive down. So we'll see if the Hawks elect for some small ball here. Hawksdorf on first. Here's the pitch to Frazier. Check swing. Didn't go, but a called strike. Breaking ball that dropped into the zone. It was a high pitch. But a called strike. 0 oh 2 now. Frazier's got to dig out of a hole here. Pitch is low in the dirt, one and two. Frazier 
pitcher with a gold elbow pad on his left elbow, his lead elbow. Hands in, twirls the bat. Now he's ready. One ball, two strikes. Pitch to Frazier. Huxdorf takes off for a second. Ball's in the dirt, so Huxdorf's there safely. And he's in scoring position now. And after the curveball was in the dirt low, Frazier held off. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out, runner in scoring position for the Hawks. The bottom of the second, trying to get on the board. First against Quinnipiac. Hagan looking in for the sign. Frazier will wait for him. His bat pointed towards the pitcher. Now he brings it up over his shoulder. Two balls, two strikes. They'll check on Huxdorf at second with no throw. Ready with the 2-2. It's on its way to Frazier. This one's lifted in the air to left, guiding towards foul territory. Left fielder moving over near the fence, and it goes off the top of the fence in foul territory and out of play. We'll do it again at 2-2. and Nice battle from Frazier here in his first at-bat of the season for the Hawks. Play yesterday. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out. Pitch to Frazier. This one's in the air to right. Fouling out of play. We'll do it again. Huxdorf stands at second base with a decent lead. Nobody really holding him on. Hagan taking his time to get the sign. Now he's got it. The 2-2 again to Frazier. Here it comes. Just outside, ball three. Count is full. Frazier will move closer to the plate now than he originally was in the first few pitches of the at-bat. Full count pitch. On its way to Brayton. This is in the dirt. Ball four. Frazier knew it right away and was able to lay off. Two batters are on to begin the bottom of the second inning. Scoreless game. With runners on first and second, Ben Tallman steps in. He's the catcher today. Number 12, Ben Tallman. Tallman's a redshirt junior, six feet tall, 205 pounds. Last year hit 244 and five doubles in a home run. He started 26 games for the Hawks. Right-handed hitter. Corners are in for Quinnipiac. Nobody out in the bottom of the second. Tallman squares the bunt. Hagen looks and offers the pitch. Nice bunt down the third baseline. Scooped up there. Throw over to first is in time to retire Tallman, but a perfectly executed sack bunt there. We'll move the runners to second and third. One away. Bottom of the second. Brings in Gable Mitchell in his Hawkeye debut. Mitchell, a freshman, second baseman, Iowa City. Number two, High school baseball, all state super team. Former all state captain. Got it 466 last year. Swings at the first pitch and fouls it out of play to the left side. Down on the count, 0 and 1 for Mitchell. 32 stolen bases and 30 RBIs last year in his senior year. At City High. He stands in there. Down on the count, 0 and 1, but runners on second and third. Ground ball, anything to the right side will score a run. Here's a ground ball to the right side, but foul. So he's sprayed left and right. Got to find between the white lines here. Mitchell down on the count, 0 and 2, with one away in the bottom of the second inning. Scoreless between Quinnipiac and Iowa. Two runners in scoring position. Hagan looks in for the side. 
in the windup here in the pitch. This is low and outside. Ball one. Good job by Gable to hold off. Not offer at that one. He's choked up on the bat here. His white batting gloves, the black and red baseball bat. Ball two strikes, one out. Bottom of the second inning. We're trying to get on the board here. Get Brody Breck some run support. Hagan ready, and the pitch. This is a breaking ball that misses outside to Mitchell. Huckstorf's the runner on third. Frazier out there at second. Hagan's in the windup with the runner on third. Looks in for the sign. The 2-2 pitch on its way to Mitchell. Popped up on the infield. Shortstop goes back. DeRosa makes the catch. Huxdorf will look to tag, and they'll throw it into home, but the pitcher's there to back it up, and so Huxdorf cannot advance. Mitchell is out on the pop-up to the shortstop. Two away for Iowa in the bottom of the second. We'll go to the top of the order. Michael Seeger's coming up. Still have those runners in scoring position at second and third, trying to get them in to open the scoring in today's game. 0-0 in the bottom of the second. Seeger's slide out to left in his first appearance in the first inning. First pitch on its way and a called strike. Outside corner. Seegers will try to put it in play to get these Hawkeye base runners in. No balls in the strike to Seegers, the junior. Stands in with a closed stance, the pitch. This is high at the hands and letters, one and one. Hanging out of the windup yet with two outs, runners on second and third. Long pause, ready with the one-one to Seegers. On the ground, foul past Coach Heller down there at third base. One and two now. Big pitch of the ball game here. A bit of chatter coming out of the Quinnipiac dugout down the first base line, cheering on their pitcher. He's up on the count on Seeger's one and two. Pitch is on its way. Low and in. Good block by the catcher. O'Connor to make the stop. Two balls, two strikes to Seeger's. So we got those base runners out there trying to get him in. Seager stands in, 2-2 pitch on its way. Popped up on the infield. First baseman moving into foul territory. This is Mueller, calls everybody off, battles the wind, and they get out of the inning. Makes the catch for out number three. We'll head to the third inning, still scoreless from Port Charlotte. Quinnipiac, zero. Iowa, zero. Back right after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at uihc.org. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Seven eight nine coming up for the Bobcats. The top of the third inning, we're scoreless. Quinnipiac in Iowa. They'll send their designated hitter. 
uh, to the plate in this third. Tesoriero. As Brody Brecht is back on the mound, he's retired the first six. Bob's got a strikeout. And Tesoriero will come in in the third. Tesoriero, then DeRosa, then Seaberg. Right-handed hitter for the Bobcats, stepping in. Back out of the windup, first pitch on its way. Low and outside to the, to the righty, ball one. Brecht has thrown 23 pitches through two innings. He's missing on his first two. Tessariero has worked the 2 and 0 count. Brecht ready with the two ball, no strike pitch. Here it is, a strike. Just below the letters, two and one. Brecht's got a couple of runners on in the bottom of the second, but couldn't bring them in, so we're still scoreless. In the top of the third. 2 1 pitch on its way. Check swing, didn't matter, called strike. Breaking ball, the outer half of the plate. And just like that, Brody's worked the count back to 2 and 2. Tessariero stands in. 2 2 pitch on its way. Check swing, called strike. Down he goes. Brax with his fourth strikeout of the day. Out number one. Not bad, eh? Number 24, One away in the top of the third. Matt DeRosa will come in. He's the shortstop for the Bobcats. Right-handed hitter. Pulls his white baseball pants up just below the D with the stirrup socks. Black stirrups. White underneath. White baseball cleats for DeRosa. First pitch on its way from Brecht. High and tight. Ball one. Cracked out of the windup with the 1-0 pitch to DeRosa. Breaking ball. Nice pitch in there. Called strike. Had a lot of zip and late movement to it. One ball and a strike now to DeRosa. Cracked with a quick motion home. On the ground to first. DeRiggy will scoop it up. He'll take it himself. Retire DeRosa unassisted. Sweet ground ball over to first. Two away. Now back for the ball. The left fielder, number seven. Bottom of the order now, Braden Seaberg, the left fielder. Seaberg had a nice diving play out and left to rob a extra base hit away from the Hawkeyes in the early going. Two away, nobody on. Top of the third. First pitch from Breck to Seaberg. Called strike down the heart of the plate. Seaberg had squared the bunny, pulled it away. Holman throws down the signs. Brecht likes what he sees. The 0-1 pitch is on its way. Check swing. Didn't matter. Called strike 0-2. Brecht certainly in a rhythm here. Looking for another strikeout. Up in the count. 0-2. The pitch from Brecht. It's a breaking ball outside. Missing. One ball, two strikes. Two outs. We'll send 2-3-4 to the box in the bottom of the third. 1-2 pitch on its way from Brecht. Inside for a ball. 2-2. Two and two. two balls, two strikes, two outs in the top of the third. Nobody on. Here's the pitch from Brecht. Swing and a miss. Drop third strike. The runner will go over to first. DeRiggy will beat him to the bag. And it'll be out number three. Another strikeout for Brecht. He's up to five this morning. He held the Quinnipiac Bobcats in check as they've gone down one, two, three in each of the first three innings. Bottom of the third coming up. Here come the Hawkeyes to the batter's box. Right after this, scoreless between Quinnipiac and Iowa. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. 
We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at bulkmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Bottom of the third inning from Port Charlotte, Florida. As the Hawkeyes and Quinnipiac Bobcats are scoreless. Bottom of the third, and they'll send 2-3-4 to the batter's box. With Raider Tello leading things off. Brody Brecht is dealing on the mound. We can give him some run support here. Hawks only have one hit through the first time through the order as Kyle Huckstorp. Third base is number 48, Raider. Uh, he had the single back in the second, but was stranded eventually at third. The batter, first pitch to him, is high and away for a ball. Hagan is on the mound for the Bobcats. Through two innings, given up one hit. He's walked two, struck out two. Tello swinging the bat high above his head, now brings it still and throws one by Coach Heller down the third baseline. Foul. One ball, one strike. One ball, one strike. Tello lifts one, this one in the air to right. Nofrio will trail over towards the line, looks up, and he makes the grab. Out number one. As Tello is retired on the fly out to right. Hawks are still trying to figure out Hagen here. A couple of times through the order. Haven't really had solid contact off of him yet. We'll see what Keaton Anthony can do. He's the designated hitter. He walked his first time up. Stands in there with an open stance. First pitch from Hagen right down the middle called strike. Bottom of the third were scoreless. Quinnipiac and Iowa. Game number two of the Snowbird Baseball Classic. Iowa won their opener yesterday over Indiana State 6-2 to two in extra innings. Next pitch to Anthony. High chopper foul past Coach Heller down there at third. 0-2. Oh One out. Nobody on for the Hawks in the bottom of the third. Hagan looks in for the sign. He's got it. He challenges Anthony with a breaking ball inside that Keaton fouls off towards the Iowa dugout, the third base dugout. He nods his head, feels confident. He'll stand in with an 0-2. Choked up a bit on the bat. Taking away that outside half, trying to put it in play if he can. No balls, two strikes. Pitch to Anthony. Breaking ball, same result. Foul ball on the third base line. We'll do it again at 0-2. Hagan looks down for the sign, 0-2 on its way to Anthony. This is a fastball that misses high. Just above the letters, 1-2. and two. Good job by Keaton to lay off of that one. Trying to get things started with one out here for the Hawks in the bottom of the third. Scoreless game between Quinnipiac and Iowa. 1-2 pitch on its way to Anthony. Breaking ball. This one's drilled into left field. Left fielder moving over towards the wall. He'll look up. It's carrying, and it's gone. It's a home run. For Keaton Anthony, a moonshot that was in the air forever. And then it dropped over the left field wall just inside the left field's foul pole. And Keaton Anthony touches them all to give the Hawkeyes the lead in the bottom of the third. A solo shot for Keaton. Anthony. 
Oh, it took a while to get down. A high fly ball to left, and it dropped just over the fence on the inside of the foul pole. And the Hawks have the lead, one nothing here in the bottom of the third. Here comes Brennan DeRiggy to build off of that home run for Anthony. He sends one in the air to the left. This one's tailing foul, and it'll be out of play. Boy, I thought for a minute, Anthony, off the bat, just looked like maybe a routine fly ball, but the winds have shifted a bit here. They're no longer blowing in. They're mainly blowing from right field to left field, so that helped the ball get out. 0-1 pitch, lined into left field and down. Dorigi's got a base hit. The Hawks are heating up now. They'll round it hard at first. Looks towards second, but he'll scramble back to first. A one-out single for Dorigi to keep the inning going for the Hawks. Starting to get a beat on Hagen now. Here comes Sam Peterson. Sam Peterson. Peterson struck out his first time up to end the first inning. Dorigi dances around at first. It's a decent lead. Pitches a breaking ball to Peterson that's outside the zone and low. Ball one. Keaton Anthony with his first home run of the season to give Iowa a 1-0 lead in the bottom of the third inning. Three hits for the Hawkeyes, back-to-back, as DeRiggy is followed up with a single. They'll check on DeRiggy over there at first. He's back in with a head-first fly. Peterson stands in. Next pitch to him. This is fouled back to the screen just to our left. One ball, one strike, one out. For the Hawks in the bottom of the third. They've opened the scoring now with a home run from Keaton Anthony. DeRiggy stands on first. Peterson is the batter. Huckstorf's on deck for the Hawks. Hagan looks in for the sign. Checks on DeRiggy. Now ready to come home with the pitch. Long look, and Peterson turns to bunt. Puts it nice down the third baseline. Scooped up, thrown over to first. Peterson has flipped, so there's no chance that he can beat that out. He's out over there at first. DeRiggy advances up to second with two away now, and Huxdorf coming up. Back bunt for the Hawks. Second one of the day. Peterson does a job. Center fielder, number nine, Kyle. Two away for the Hawks in the bottom of the third, leading 1-0. DeRiggy stands at second to batter's Kyle Huckstor. Singled to lead off the second inning. First pitch to Huckstor, breaking ball that started high and didn't drop into the zone. Riggy with a big lead at second. He'll be going on contact. If Huxdorf can get any, this pitch is low, 2-0. and Hitters count here for Kyle. To a nice start this season. The right-handed batter stands in. Two balls, no strikes, two outs for the Hawks in the bottom of the third. Long pause, and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Good cut from Huxdorf, but he comes up empty on a fastball that was just about the chest. Huxdorf looks back at the umpire and asks if that would have been a called strike. The umpire nods his head. Yes, it would have been had Kyle not swung at it. Two balls, one strike, two outs. Huxdorf in there with an even stance. Not open, not closed. Egg and ready. The 2-1. On its way to Kyle. Inside for a ball. Looks like for a minute the umpire wanted to call it a strike, but just flinched, didn't offer the sign. Three balls and a strike now to Huckstorp. Two away, a base hit. I'll try to score Dorigi. 
finds an alley. Three balls and a strike. The pitch to Huckstorp. Swing and a miss. Nice pitch. Dropped out of the zone low. Huckstorp went after it. Came up empty. Wind is shifted again now, blowing in from center. Combination of blowing in and then blowing from right to left. Quinnipiac dugout gets loud. This full count pitch to Huckstorp. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Hagan is ready. Out of the stretch. Here's the pitch. This is low. Ball four in the dirt. Hagan went with a breaking ball, and he couldn't throw it for a strike. So Huckstorp walks. He's on for the second time today. Braden Frazier comes up now with two outs. Opportunity to do some damage for the Hawks. Runners on first and second. Frazier walks. His first time up. First pitch is fair down the line. The Frazier's got a base hit. They're going to wave around Dorigi. It bounces off the wall. Dorigi scores. Here comes Huckstorp. He'll score on a two RBI double from Braden Frazier. How about that for the Hawkeyes? Iowa leads 3 nothing now in the bottom of the third. The Riggy scores. Hogsdorf scores, and Frazier stands at second. Iowa three, Quinnipiac zero in the bottom of the third, and here comes Ben Tallman trying to keep the inning alive for the Hawks. There's some run support now for Brody Brack. Frazier with a nice line drive past the bag at third. First pitch on its way to Tallman is a breaking ball. Called strike on the inner half of the plate. Hawks are finding their rhythm now. Up three to nothing. They put a three spot on the Bobcats in the bottom of the third. Owen pitch to Tallman is on its way. This one's lifted in the air. Left center field. Center fielder Zimbardo coming on. Left fielder Seaberg will call him off. He'll reach up into the Florida sun, and he'll grab the ball for out number three. Nice end for the Hawkeyes. They put up three on the Bobcats. The solo shot from Keith Anthony, followed by a two-RBI double from Braden Frazier. We're through three here in Florida. It's Iowa three, Quinnipiac zero. We're back right after this. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Glamo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Top of the fourth inning from Port Charlotte, Florida, in the Snowbird Baseball Classic. Iowa has put some things together now. They lead Quinnipiac 3 0 as we head to the fourth. It's going to be the top of the order for the Bobcats as Brody Brecht has done a nice job through three with five strikeouts. He's faced nine batters and set them all down. Uh, over half of them coming with the strikeout. He's topped 100 miles per hour a few times this morning. So a good start for. Brack, they'll look to keep it going now that he's got some run support as we head to the fourth inning. At the Gamer at Home, Wimmer's premium quality hot dogs and sausages will score with family and friends. Take the highest quality beef and pork, and you get the best tasting hot dogs. 
Wimmers, the official hot dog of the of the Hawkeyes. All right, top of the order with Maves coming up to lead off the fourth inning for the Bobcats. Iowa three, Quinnipiac zero. Maves, the second baseman. First pitch from Brack is high and away for a ball. Maves had a comebacker to Brack to start the game and was put out one to three. One oh pitch. Curveball called strike. Look at that thing. More of a slider. It came in so hot from Brecht. One and one now. Brecht with an angled stance towards the home dugout down the third base line. One one pitch on its way. Ground ball to the right side. Mitchell has to charge hard. He's got it. Throws it over to Derigi, and he beats the sliding Maves to the bag. Out number one. has got a little bit of action at second base. A couple of putouts for him. A couple of throws from second to first. One away here for Quinnipiac at the top of the fourth. Zimbardo comes up. He was frozen by Breck and struck out back in the first. Brody's ready. First pitch in there for a strike. Breck with the run support now. Iowa leading Quinnipiac 3-0. A one pitch on its way to Zimbardo. Same spot, same result. Called strike, outside corner, 0-2. Brecht going for a sixth strikeout if he can get it right here. Brody's ready. Here comes the 0-2. This one's away and downstairs for a ball. One and two now. The wind picks up here in Port Charlotte. Now shifting from right field to left field would be carrying out of the ballpark to left. One-two pitch on its way from Brecht. Outside, two and two. Really zipped that one in there. That got to home plate in a hurry. He's worked around the outside of the plate against Zimbardo now and missed a couple of times. Let's see if he can bring it back here for the two-two. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. Another strikeout for Brody is sixth of the game. The Bobcats race fielder. Two away in the top of the fourth. Here's Anthony D'Onofrio. Anthony D'Onofrio. He's the right fielder. He struck out in the first to end the inning. That's ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Lifted in the air to left. This one's sailing foul and out of play. Catcher Tallman lets the third baseman shortstop and left fielders know, hey, this one's out of play. No balls and a strike to D'Onofrio. Two away, nobody on. Brecht looks in for the sign from Tallman, and he's ready. Here comes the 0-1. Fouled right back to us, right above our heads. Straight back into the screen, 0-2. Challenged with the high fastball. Brody's cooking now through three and two thirds. Got six strikeouts facing 11 Quinnipiac batters. The 12th batter is D'Onofrio in there right now. The 0-2 pitch is on its way to him. This one's low, blocked nicely by Tallman. A kick save. One ball, two strikes. Top of the fourth inning, Iowa leading 3 nothing. Two outs, one-two pitch on its way from Breck. Check swing, he went around. Drop third strike, Tallman's going to have to send it down to DeRiggy, and he will do so. DeRiggy will touch the bag, and another strikeout for Breck. He's through four, and he's got seven strikeouts after facing 12 Quinnipiac batters. Bobcats go down one, two, three once again. We head to the bottom of the fourth, Iowa is leading the Bobcats 3-0. We're back right up to this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. 
When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. Bottom of the fourth inning from Port Charlotte, Florida, Iowa out to a 3-0 lead. Got all three runs in the bottom of the third inning. Look to build on it here as we get to the bottom of the fourth. They'll be facing a new pitcher uh, for Quinnipiac. It'll be 9-1-2 for the Hawks. But the new pitcher uh, for Quinnipiac is first year Andrew Rubio. And Rubio is a right handed pitcher, 6 7 230 from New Jersey. Stands in a little bit, uh, a little bit taller than Hagen, uh, seven inches taller. So a little bit of a different angle coming into Hawkeye hitters here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Stick to a four nothing lead. Bobcats get loose out in the field. I will have Gable Mitchell, and then the top of the order, Michael Seegers and Raider Hello coming to the plate. The freshman pitcher. Rubio. Number 45, Andrew Rubio. Leading off the so righty versus lefty matchup to, to start here. Number two. Rubio looks in. See if he works out of the windup of the stretch. Mitchell Number is the batter, left-handed Andrew. hitter. Mitchell. Bayo set out of the stretch and the pitch to Mitchell. This one's lined foul into the trees over there and left. Out of play. 0-1 is the count on Mitchell. Mitchell popped up to short. It's first time up back in the second. Next pitch on its way. This is a chopper to second base. Charged hard, fielded on a bounce, thrown over to first in time to retire Mitchell for out number one of the inning. Put out four to three there as Maves threw it over to Mueller. One away, top of the order here for the Hawks. Seeger steps in. Michael's over two today with a fly out to left and a pop up in foul territory to first. Seagulls will tap the plate, twirl the bat, and he's ready for the first pitch to the Quinnipiac hurler. Seagulls squares the bunt, pulls it back, and it's outside for ball one. Bottom of the fourth inning, Iowa three, Quinnipiac zero. Hawks have four hits. Left a few runners on base, however. Left five of them out there. Clean game so far. Neither team has an error. Next pitch to Seegers. Skirts low and away. Michael's up in the count 2-0. and up. Two balls, no strikes, one out. Base is empty for the Hawks. Out of the fourth, Seegers will take this one just below the letters for a called strike. Two and one now. Third baseman playing just behind the bag down there at third. Seegers had squared to bunt earlier. Pulled it back. See if he's thinking similar lines this time on this next pitch. The 2-1 on its way. This one just missed. Three and one now. Seegers in an advantageous count as a hitter.
Three balls, one strike, one out. Pitch on its way to Seegers. This one's a called strike. Seegers had flipped his bat and was headed to first base. He'll have to come back and grab it and reset now for the full count pitch that'll be coming from the Quinnipiac pitcher. Rubio looks in for the sign. Tall 6'7", right-handed pitcher. Ready with the 3-2. Here it comes to Seegers. Ground ball right back to Rubio. Off his glove, picks it back up, turns, throws in time to get Seegers at first. Close play over there, but Rubio did a nice job to hang with it. Two away for the Hawks. In the bottom of the fourth. Here comes Raider Tello. He's 0 for 1 today, was hit by a pitch in the first, fly out to right. His last time up in the third. Tello's got an open stance, first pitch to him. He puts this one in the air to right, carrying well towards the line and right. Right fielder dives, can't make a play, but it's foul. Ball kept tailing and tailing. Right fielder dove for it. D'Onofrio gave a good effort. Bounced foul. The 0 and 1. No balls and a strike to Tello. Two outs, nobody on for the Hawks in the bottom of the fourth. Leading Quinnipiac 3 0. Tello will take this one inside corner for a strike, 0 and 2. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Sabayo sent with the 0 2. Here it comes. This is a base hit into the gap. Tello. Puts it into right center field. It's cut off nicely by Ganofrio out there in the right, so it holds Tello to a single. He gets things going with two outs for the Hawks in the fourth. Here comes Keaton Anthony now, the D.H., Walked in the first. Solo home run that opened the scoring for Iowa in the third. Comes up now. First pitch to him. Called strike. Outside corner. Anthony didn't like it. Not much he can do with that pitch on the outside corner. 0-1 is the count to Keaton, the designated hitter for the Hawks. Draft prospect. Next pitch on its way to him. Lines this one hard foul to the right side. 0 and 2. Protect the plate with two strikes here. Tello with a medium lead over at first. 0 2 pitch on its way. High for ball one. Anthony crouched over the plate. Good job laying off that one. I would try to add to their 3 nothing lead in the fourth inning here. One ball, two strikes to Anthony. Ground ball right up the middle, and nice diving play at short. They flip it to second, and it is in time. They got him. They got Tello at second. The shortstop, DeRosa, made a nice diving play right behind the bag and flipped it to his infield mate, Mays, to retire the side. All right, we're through four here in Port Charlotte, Florida. No runs for the Hawks that inning, but Iowa leads 3 nothing. We head to the fence. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah. 
Hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free. Four, five, six coming up for Quinnipiac. We'll set that lineup right after this. We owe our stations an ID break. Time for station identification. We'll pause 10 seconds. This is Iowa Baseball. On deck, Mueller in the hole. Brecht is on the mound. He's through four innings, seven strikeouts. He has faced 12 batters. First pitch gets to the backstop. It's low and outside. Ball one. Brecht looks in for the 1-0 pitch. It's on its way to O'Connor. Nice slider inside corner called strike one and one. Brecht's done a nice job today moving things around. Slider's been effective. Fastball's topped 100 miles a couple of times today. 1-1 pitch on its way to O'Connor. There's the breaking ball. Just missed. The umpire looked over like he was going to call a strike, but didn't. The ball, 2-1. and one, Missing high. Breck's ready with the next pitch. It's on its way. Swing and a miss. Two balls, two strikes now. Leadoff hitter O'Connor, he grounded out to second his first time up back in the second inning. Brett looks in. He's got seven strikeouts today. Here's the next pitch. Foul back into the screen. Ball drops right in front of us here. Broadcast position. We're outdoors today from Port Charlotte, Florida, right behind Home plate a little bit off-center to the left. Wind is blowing in directly into our face, about 15 miles an hour. Two balls, two strikes from Brecht. Here's the pitch. Just outside. Breaking ball dipped out of the zone. Count's now full. Brody's up to around 50 pitches now. Full count. And now the umpires are having a meeting and discussing balls and strikes here as pitching coach McGrath, Sean McGrath, the Hawkeyes, came out to challenge. He thinks it's 2-2. We've got it at 3-2. We've got a full count here. The umpires are meeting near third base. Side the, the pitches. So it is a full count. Yep. Full count. That's the consensus that's been reached. And so the full count pitch will be on its way from Breck to O'Connor to lead off the fifth. Swing and a miss. The pitch is in the dirt. Tallman's going to have to throw it down to first. He does so accurately to Dorigi. Out number one. Strikeout number eight for Brent. McGuire Tuffy, the third baseman, will step in. Left-handed hitter. Wide out to right back in the second. That's fifth in the order for the Bobcats. 
First pitch misses high from Brett. Tuffy's a shorter batter, standing at 5'8", so the zone squeezes a bit. One ball, no strikes, one out, nobody on. For the Bobcats in the top of the fifth. Iowa leads 3 nothing. as Brody will step off the back of the rubber and reset, recycle the signs. 1-0 pitch on its way. This is in the dirt, 2-0 now. Ready with the 2-0 pitch. It's on its way home. There it is. Called strike on the outside corner. 2-1. and one. Tuffy takes this one on the outside corner in the same spot. Two balls and two strikes now with one out. Nobody on for the Bobcats in the top of the fifth. Next pitch is fouled off of Tolman's gear. We'll do it again at two and two. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Brecht with eight strikeouts through four and a third innings. Faced 13 Bobcat batters. The 14th here fouls this one off again, two and two. It will remain. Racked up to 55 pitches. We talked with Coach McGrath in pregame. They thought maybe 65 or 70 for Brody today, but he's got a pretty good game going. Two balls, two strikes. Pitch on its way. Swing and a miss. Got him on a breaking ball. It dropped out of the zone. Maybe a change up there. Strikeout number nine for Brody. Second strikeout of the inning. Two away in the top of the fifth. Now batting for Bobcats, number 33, first baseman. Bring up Sebastian Mueller. Mueller. Mueller, the right-handed first baseman, will come in. He struck out his only plate appearance in the second. First pitch to him. Ground ball foul into the Iowa dugout on the third base line. 0 and 1. Brecht working ahead in the count. Brex 0-1 pitch, lifted in the air, foul territory to the right side. Dorigi gives chase, as does the right fielder Mosley, uh, rather Frazier, and it gets out of play and foul 0-2 now. Top of the fifth inning, Iowa 3, Quinnipiac 0. Bobcats batting. This half, two outs, nobody on. Counts 0-2 to Mueller. Mueller with a bright orange bat. Blue highlights. Brecht ready with the 0-2. Here it comes. Low and in. Missed the zone. Ball one. A strikeout here, and Brecht would... Strike out the side. That's what he's going for. It would put him in double-digit strikeouts as well. The one-two pitch. This is outside. Two's on the board now. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Correct ready with the two-two. Missing high now at the eyes. Full count. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Brody trying to get... Through the fifth inning here. Nice job so far. Full count pitch is on its way home. Swing and a miss. Brecht strikes out the side. He gets his tenth strikeout of the day. And he sets down the Bobcats in order in the fifth. We'll head to the bottom half of the inning. Iowa three, Quinnipiac zero. We'll be back right after this. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great. But they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. 
Join U.S. Cellular and the Phones Down for 5 Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. Bottom of the fifth inning from Port Charlotte, Florida. Iowa leading Quinnipiac 3-0. The Hawkeyes will take on the Bobcats again tomorrow. First pitch is 9 a.m. Central Time. Pre-game at 8.30. Hawks will send up 4-5-6 to Riggy, Peterson, and Huckstore for the plate in this inning. When corn grows fuel, Iowans win. Ethanol is a renewable fuel that's better for our environment, our health, and our wallets. Share your winning moments using hashtag IowansWin, and you could win even more from Iowa corn. Dorigi will step in now with Iowa leading 3-0. Bottom of the fifth inning, the Hawks have pieced together five hits. First pitch to Dorigi is a called strike at the knees in the outside corner as Rabio works in the count 0-1. Rabio through one inning has given up one hit. Right-hander from the stretch, the 0-1. Lined into right field, a base hit. Splitting the first baseman and second baseman. And Dorigi, the leadoff man, is on with a single in the fifth. A couple of hot guys are getting loose in the bullpen. Now batting for the hot guys, number 11. Left fielder, Sam. Here's See him. how long they go with... Five. Sam Peterson is up now in the batter's box. Struck out in the first. Sack bunt in the third. Runner on first is DeRiggy. First pitch to Peterson. Called strike high and tight. Called the strike. 0 and 1. Looking for the sign, the 0-1 on its way to Peterson. This one's hit into left field. Got top spin on it. It'll dive in front of the left fielder for a base hit. Peterson is on for the Hawks in the bottom of the fifth. Two up and two on for Iowa, and they're in business, leading 3 nothing. runners on first and second. Back-to-back singles. The wind really killed that ball and knocked it down out okay. left in front of Seaberg. Number nine. Kyle. Here comes Kyle Huckstorf. Huckstorf singled in the second, walked and scored in the third. Runners on first and second with nobody out. Huckstorf lines this one into left center field. It gets down in front of the center fielder. They're going to hold DeRiggy at third. The bases will be loaded. For Braden Frazier, back to back to back singles to start the fifth. Iowa leading three nothing. Looking to add to it here with the bases loaded, nobody out, and Braden Frazier. Number four, Frazier. Frazier steps in. He walked in the second and had a two RBI double in the third. Trying to continue his productive day with the bases loaded and nobody out. First pitch on its way to Frazier. Swing and a miss. Slider that swept out of the zone. Frazier went after it. Good aggressive swing, but he missed it. Bio looking in for the sign. Frazier will wait till he's ready. Now he lifts the bat up over his shoulder. 0-1 pitch on its way to Braden. Check swing. He went around 0-2. 
Frazier grips an all black bat with black batting gloves. Looks towards the pitcher down in the count, 0 2. Still got life, though, with the bases loaded and nobody out in the bottom of the fifth. Pitch on its way to Frazier. This one's lined into right field and down. It's a base hit. DeRiggy will score. They're going to hold Peterson at third. Huxdorf has to slam on the brakes at second and scurry back there. Four singles in a row, and Frazier with his third RBI of the day. Iowa leading 4 nothing now. Nobody out. Base is still loaded. Here comes Ben Coleman. Number 12, Ben Coleman. Hawks are playing on the merry-go-round now. They go station to station. Tallman is the batter. First pitch to him is low and outside. Nice block by O'Connor behind the plate to stop that from getting to the backstop. Frazier is at first. Huxdorf out there at second. Peterson over here at third. Batter is Tallman. Sack bunt in the second, flat out to left in the third. He's up again in the bottom of the fifth. Iowa leading 4 nothing. Iowa ready with the 1-0 pitch on its way to Tallman. Base hit in again into left. This is a sharp line drive. They're going to hold the runner at third, but Peterson will score. And again, the Hawks with a single and another base hit to add to their lead. Five singles in a row this inning. And it'll prompt a mound visit from the pitching coach for Quinnipiac. Iowa leading 5 nothing. Five singles in a row. Started with Dorigi. And then Peterson and then Huxdorf. And now Frazier and Tallman have gone back to back. Frazier and Tallman with RBI. So a mound visit. If anybody gets loose down there in right field for Quinnipiac, you don't see anybody yet. Nobody out. Base is loaded for the black and gold. As the Hawkeye offense is starting to figure out Rabio here, who through one inning, has given up six hits now. He did a nice job in the fourth, giving up just a single. But Iowa's still going in the fifth inning. Here comes Gable Mitchell, stands in in the left-handed batter's box. Pieces is loaded, nobody out. Iowa five, Quinnipiac zero. First pitch to Mitchell. This one's lifted in the air, deep to right. Right fielder going back. He's at the wall. He'll look up and he'll make the catch. Runners on second and third will tag. Huxdorf will score from third, so a sacrifice fly for Mitchell deep to right, adding to the Hawkeye lead, 6 nothing. Runners on the corners now for the Hawks with one away. Number 10. Hawkeye, shortstop, Michael Seagrid. Seagrid is up now. Tallman on first. Frazier over there at third. Runners on the corners with one out. Iowa 6-0 in the bottom of the fifth inning. Good lead at first from Tallman. Seagrid's trying to get into the hit column here today. First pitch to him. He squares the bunt, drops it down the first base side. They're going to throw it over to first as Frazier sneaks in the backside and scores. They get Seegers out at first. And Frazier, he'll come in on the backside and touch home plate. Seven to nothing, the Hawks with the lead. Tallman advances up to second on the bunt. And here comes Raider Tello in the bottom of the fifth. 
Iowa out to a 7 nothing lead now. Two away, runner at second. Tello is the batter, first pitch to him. Check swing, called strike on the outside corner. No balls, one strike, two outs. Rabio looks at second at Tallman. Now he looks home in the pitch. This one skips away from the catcher, and so Tallman will be able to get over to third. The catcher tried to backhand. They got by him. The credit is a wild pitch. Tallman... Advances that way to third. Two outs, bottom of the fifth. Iowa seven to nothing. Over Quinnipiac. Tello is the batter. One ball and a strike. Here's the pitch to him. This is in the dirt again. Two and one. Keaton Anthony stands on deck in a busy fifth inning for the Hawks. They put up four runs in this frame. Two balls and a strike to Tello. Crushes this one to right, but foul and out of play down the line. Two balls and two strikes now. Two away. Hello holds the bat on his shoulder. Now lifts it up. Starts swinging it above his head. Two balls, two strikes, the pitch. Same spot, fouled out of play to the right. Staying alive, we'll do it again. Still in the bottom of the fifth here. Iowa's put up a big spot of four runs so far. Extend their lead to 7-0. Tello trying to add to it here with a runner on third. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Tello taps this foul again. Ohio and Tello battling. This at bat. Stuck at 2 2. This one skirts outside. A slider counts now full. Three balls, two strikes, two outs in the bottom of the fifth. Tello can advance and keep the inning alive for the Hawks. Full count pitch, here it comes. Tapped foul again, this time to the left side. Raiders running up that pitch count, making them work. Guys have ten hits, five of which have come in this inning. 7-0 7-0 lead over Quinnipiac. Three balls, two strikes. The pitch to Tello. This is a high chopper on the ground to short. Scooped up, thrown over to first in time to beat Tello by a step and retire the side. A good at bat for Raider, but he's put out 6-3 to three to conclude the fifth. Iowa gets four runs on five hits. No errors in the inning. We head to the sixth. The Hawkeyes lead 7-0. to zero. We're back right after this. Listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! 
Ooh, got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. All right, to the top of the sixth we go from the Snowbird Baseball Classic, game number two for the Hawkeyes in this season opening tournament. The Hawkeyes lead the Bobcats of Quinnipiac 7-0, and we'll see a new pitcher for the black and gold. Zach Volker will come in for Iowa. So we can close the book on uh, Brody Brecht and his outing. Brody was perfect today through five innings. Gave up no hits, no earned runs, no walks. 10 strikeouts. He faced 15 batters, struck out 10 of them. That's a pretty good clip. Threw a total of 68 pitches for the Hawkeyes. That was sort of the plan for Brody today, was to uh, get him maybe into the 60s, maybe the 70s, pitch count-wise, and then uh, get him on out of there. But Brecht was perfect today through five innings, didn't give up a hit, no runs, and he struck out 10. The next pitcher for the Hawkeyes will be Zach Volker. Volker, a redshirt sophomore, right-handed pitcher, 6'2", 215, pretty good presence there on the mound. Uh, transferred in from Long Beach State last year, was 4-4 four and four with a 6.05 ERA. He had 14 appearances. He started seven games. He struck out 32. He is from Granite Bay, California, so a little bit far from home, but his new home is in Iowa City for the Hawkeyes this year. Iowa leading seven to nothing, so Volker's got a lot of room to work with. Don't want to let this thing get any close. Volker's got good stuff, so excited to see it in the Hawkeye debut today. Hawkeye baseball is brought to you by Riverside Casino and Golf Resort, home of the Draft Day Sports Lounge, a luxury hotel and spa, five restaurants, and more. Just minutes south of Iowa City. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-suites hotels. Home down suites and home two suites by uh, by Hilton. They each offer guests spacious suites, complimentary breakfast, 24-hour fitness center, pool and hot tub, guest laundry, and convenient location. Let their warm and friendly staff take care of you and your family when you visit Hawkeye Country. All right, bottom third of the order for Quinnipiac at the top of the sixth inning. Seven, eight, nine. To face Volker, Tessariero, the first man in. Volker is a righty. Tessariero is a right-handed batter. First pitch found back to the screen. Count is 0-1. Volker begins in the windup at his belt, then lifts the mitt with the ball up to his eyes and then begins. Pumps a nice pitch in there, 0-2 for Tessariero. No balls, two strikes, nobody out in the top of the six. Iowa leading 7-0. Play with the 0-2, here it comes. Breaking ball that slides outside, one and two. Volker trying to get the first batter of the inning. The one-two pitch is on its way. Fouled out of play, up over our heads and to the right. with a sandy white glove. He's got a necklace that hangs on the outside of his jersey. He's ready with the one, two, bring it at home. Check swing. They're going to send it down to first to see if he went around. He did not. So Tessariero will stay alive. Two balls and two strikes. Volker looks in, likes the sign that he got from Tallman. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. 
High heater, high and tight. And Volker gets his first strikeout as a Hawkeye. Shortstop, Top of the sixth inning, Iowa seven, Quinnipiac zero. Eight hitter Matt DeRosa comes up. Was put out unassisted on a ground ball to first. Was only at bat back in the third. Squaring to bunt and pulling it back and watching a strike sail by is DeRosa. 0 and 1 is the count with one away. Nobody on for the Bobcats in the top of the sixth. Volker ready with the 0-1. It's on its way. This one's in the air, down the line and right. Got room in foul territory. Dorigi moves over, and then it goes out of play. Wind carried that one, kept sailing and sailing, and got out of here foul. 0-2 on DeRosa. with a strikeout already in this inning, looking for another one here if he can set down DeRosa with a strike. The 0-2 pitch is on its way. Just outside. Great pitch. Good job by DeRosa to lay off that one. One and two is the count with one away in the top of the sixth inning. Iowa leading Quinnipiac 7-0 so far. The 1-2. Doug foul at the end of the bat. It spins over to the on-deck circle where Seberg will pick it up and flip it into his own dugout. Do it again at one and two. Looker ready with the one, two, brings it home. Check swing. They'll send it down again. Didn't go this time either. Two and two. See what Volker can come up with for a closeout pitch here. Long at bat with DeRosa. Two balls, two strikes. Here it comes from Volker. Fouled out of play again. Nice battle here from the Bobcat shortstop. His money's worth from Volker. Two balls, two strikes. One out in the Bobcat six. Volker set again. The wind and the delivery. Swing and a miss. Got him with an off speed. And DeRosa swung over the top of it. Back-to-back strikeouts to start the sixth for Volker. Bobcat left fielder, number seven, Braden. Here comes Braden Seabird, left fielder, also a left-handed batter. Volker ready with the first pitch to him. Breaking ball that catches the outside corner, called strike. Next pitch on its way, called strike again, outside corner, 0-2 to Seabird. No balls, two strikes, two outs, nobody on for the Bobcats in their half of the six. Hawks up 7-0. Volker ready with the 0-2. It's on its way. Just high, below the letters, but high and out of the zone, one and two. Seberg with good discipline not to offer at that one. Looks good from here. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Volker with the wind and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Volker strikes him out, and he strikes out the side. Back-to-back innings where Hawkeye pitchers have put down Bobcats in order all via the strikeout. Eight straight strikeouts for the Hawkeye pitching staff, and we head to the bottom of the sixth with Iowa leading 7-0. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanye Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. 
When you're in the eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit the Hotel at Kirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. Bottom of the six from Port Charlotte, Florida, the Snowbird Baseball Classic. The Hawkeyes coming to the plate, leading Quinnipiac 7-0. Thank you for tuning in to Iowa Hawkeye Baseball today. Starting to warm up here. It was chilly this morning, uh, but warming up nicely now. Wind dying down just a bit. Our outdoor broadcast this now afternoon. Sam Honar will lead things off for the Hawks. So we'll see the changes that are made to the Iowa lineup as Honar steps in in Keaton Anthony's spot. Honar takes the first pitch for a strike on our left-handed batter. Rabio is still in there pitching for the Bobcats. Next pitch to Honar is fouled off out of play the left side. 0-2. Hawks are going to make a few changes with Blake Guerin in the on-deck circle. Honar was solid yesterday for the Hawks. One for four. As the 0-2 pitch is inside, one and two now. One, two, fouled back into the screen just to our left. Honar stays alive. Sam's got a gold brace on his lead elbow, which would be his right elbow. Protecting anything on the inside corner. If anything were to hit him, he'd have that elbow guard on. One ball, two strike pitch to Honar. He fouls it off the catcher's mitt. Stays alive. Good battle here for Sam and a pinch hit appearance. Honar's locked in. The 1-2 on its way. This is inside. Gets all the way to the backstop. It got by the catcher. Two balls, two strikes now. Nobody out in the bottom of the sixth inning. Iowa shutting out Quinnipiac. 7 nothing to this point. Two-two on its way to Honar. Fouled right back in front of us this time. We dodge out of the way as if the screen wouldn't have protected us. Go again at two and two. Honar with a good battle here. On the heels of the big inning that was the fifth, where I will put up four. Let's see if they can add to it beginning in the sixth now. Two two on its way. This is high. Right at eye level. Counts now full. Pitcher Rabio is set with the full count pitch. And he brings it home to Honar. Swing and a miss. Sam chased a high fastball, and he's retired on strikes for the first out of the inning. All right, that'll bring up Blake Guerin, freshman first baseman. First baseman. Stands at six foot six, two eighty. 
Darren. Darren with his first appearance as a Hawkeye, making his debut. Tall drink of water, six foot six. Ranked as the number one player coming out of Minnesota. He bats for Derigi now. Darren takes a first pitch. Breaking ball, called strike on the inside corner. Not a ton he can do with that. Assume that Darren will go in at first base following this inning. Darren taps this one lightly foul to the left side. Chase Mosley is on deck for the Hawks. Spot of Sam Peterson. But for now, Garen's down on the count 0-2 with one away in the bottom of the sixth inning. Kyle already with the pitch. Brings it from the belt, brings it home. Garen taps it foul to stay alive. At 0-2. with an even stance, bends both knees. Grips the bat with black batting gloves, 0-2 pitch. This one's drilled into left center. Got a lot of carry on it. Deep and one hops, two hops to the wall. Garen is around first. They'll round it and head for second as he pipes a double in his first career at bat for the Hawkeyes. As a double, and he's fired up out there in second base. Quite the character Blake Garrett is. We've learned that in the early going in his career as a Hawkeye. So a two-strike double for Garrett to the left center gap. Right. And he's on with one away. Number 35, Chase Mosley. Here comes Chase Mosley now. He played yesterday in right field. Hawks making some substitutions here in the Sixth inning. Mosley transferred in from Kirkwood. Still looking for his first Hawkeye hit. He was outstanding for the Eagles up there in Cedar Rapids. First pitch to him. Checks his swing, pulls it back in time. Mosley was a 464 hitter at Kirkwood with 79 RBIs, 21 home runs. From Eldridge, Iowa. Stands at 5'7", 170. One away. Runner on second is Garen. 1-0 count. Pitch on its way to Mosley. Holds off that one, and it misses outside 2-0. Nobody warming up for Quinnipiac in their bullpen. Stick with Rabio for the time being. Iowa leading 7-0 in the bottom of the sixth inning. Hawks have 11 hits today. Two zero pitch on its way to Mosley. This is in the dirt, ball three. See what they have Chase do here in a 3-0 count. Are they going to give him the red light or have him swing away if it's there? Three balls, no strikes to Chase Mosley, who stands on his left tiptoe. 3-0 is low. Four-pitch walk for Mosley, and he is on with the walk. So with one away, it brings up Kyle Huxdorf, runners on first and second for the black and gold in the bottom of the sixth inning, already leading 7-0. Here comes Huxdorf, who's reached safely in each of his first three appearances. Two singles and a walk. He's also scored two runs. Rabio looks in for the sign. Now it looks like we might get some action in the Quinnipiac bullpen. First pitch to Huxdorf. The bender called strike on the inside corner. Rabio gets ahead in the count 0 1. No balls and a strike. 
Pitch to Huxdorf. This one's hit right up the middle. Picked up by the second baseman. Flipped to second for one on the first for two. And the Bobcats turn a nice 4-6-3 double play to end the threat and the inning. No runs for the Hawks. One hit. No errors. And a nice double play for Quinnipiac to end the sixth inning. We head to the seventh. Iowa seven. Quinnipiac zero. We're back right after this. Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. Hey, everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wisconsin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wisconsin Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. John Leo back with you for Hawkeye Baseball in Port Charlotte, Florida. To the seventh inning we go. Iowa leading Quinnipiac in their second of three games down here in the Snowbird Baseball Classic. Up on Quinnipiac, seven to nothing. As Jack Volker is back on the mound for his second inning of work for Iowa. He retired the side all by strikeout last time uh, in the sixth. We owe you a station break. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. 10 seconds for station ID. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. All right, top of the seventh inning, Quinnipiac sends the top of their order up. Maeve, Zimbardo, and D'Onofrio. Changes for the Hawkeyes defensively. Garen is in the game at first base. Uh, Braden Frazier moves from right to left. And Chase Mosley is inserted in the game at right field. So the outfield is now Frazier in left, Huxdorf in center, Mosley in right. Batter is Maves, who's 0 for 2 today. First pitch on his way from Volker. Grounded foul past the first base, base coach down there, the right side of the field. It's a job by Volker to get ahead. 0 and 1. Volker looks in for the sign from Tallman. He likes it, and he's got it. 0 1 pitch on its way. Ground ball to the right side. Foul again. Same play. and 2 for Maves, the left-handed batter. Grounded out to the pitcher, Breck, to start the game. And grounded out to Gable Mitchell at second base, back in the fourth. No balls, two strikes. Volker ready. Rocks and deals. Just missing high and away. 1-2. and two. One ball, two strikes, nobody out in the top of the seventh. Volker feels it, deals it. This one misses just high at the letters, two and two. Volker peering in. Long pause, the two-two. Popped up left side. Frazier looks up. He's got sunglasses on. And he makes the grab for the first out of the inning in left field. So that'll break the streak for Iowa where they struck out eight Bobcats in a row. Maves flies out to left. One away in the seventh. And here comes Zimbardo. 
He struck out Jim twice Gordon. today. Right-handed hitter. Volker will give him his best. First pitch on the ground to first, and it's past the diving Darren. The first hit of the game for the Bobcats as Zimbardo rounds first, heads for second, a late throw. And he's in there sliding safely. Zimbardo gets the first hit of the day for Quinnipiac. It comes in the seventh inning, a double. Right off the end of the bat, had a lot of funky spin on it, and it got past Darren right down the line into right. Hawks had been perfect up to that point through six and a third. Number 26, right fielder, Anthony Donofrio. Right fielder Donofrio now with a runner in scoring position. One out. Iowa leading 7-0 in the top of the seventh. First pitch from Volker is outside. Zach has to shift now to the stretch. Donofrio 0 for 2 today with two strikeouts. On ball, no strikes. Pitch on its way. Outside, 2-0. and Volker looks in for the sign from Tallman. Gives a nod of approval. And ready with the 2-0. Here it comes. Breaking ball. Called strike. 2-1 and one now. Two balls, one strike, one out. Runner on second for the Bobcats in the top of the seventh. Just got their first hit of the game. Volker ready. 2-1. And this is a base hit into right now. They're going to send the runner from third. No, they slam the brakes on him. And so there'll be runners at the corners for Quinnipiac in the seventh inning. A base hit to right for D'Onofrio. The the Bobcats in a little bit of business here. I'm going to ground ball up the middle, see if we can turn a double play. Here comes Keegan O'Connor. Keegan O'Connor grounded out to second. His first time up back in the second. Struck out in the fifth. Runners on the corners for Quinnipiac with one out. Nobody getting loose in the Iowa pen. First pitch. This one's in the air to right. Carrying well. Mosley's got to get on his horse to track it down, and he does so. Makes the grab for out number two. The runner will tag and score from third, and the Bobcats are on the board in the seventh as Maves crosses the plate. Uh, Check that Zimbardo. Zimbardo scores for the Bobcats. Bobcats third baseman, number four, Puffy McGuire. Two away now for Quinnipiac in the seventh. Scores now seven to one. Hawks in the lead. First pitch to Tuffy is fouled out of play to the left side. Runner on first for the Bobcats, D'Onofrio. No balls in the strike. D'Onofrio fakes the steal to second. The ball, uh, the pitch misses low for a ball. One and one. Two away in the seventh. I'll check on the runner at first, and they got him! A pickoff move! Volker over to Garen, and they pick him off first base. Volker put it right at the bag. It was low. All Garen had to do was catch it, and he did just that. And they pick off the runner at first to end the top half of the seventh. Quinnipiac, they get one run in the inning. Iowa still leads 7-1 to one as we stretch things out. Headed to the bottom of the seventh. We're back right after this. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. 
These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Hot game game. Welcome back to Hawkeye Baseball from Fort Charlotte, Florida. Bottom of the seventh inning, Iowa leading Quinnipiac 7-1. to one. After the Bobcats got their first couple of hits and run in the top half of the seventh. Iowa will send seven, eight, nine to the batter's box. And we'll begin with Braden Frazier. Right, left fielder, number four, Braden Frazier. Frazier's had a really nice day for the Hawks. Three RBIs, a run scored, a single, a double, and a walk for the Hawkeye. Now left fielder, started the game in right, moved over to left after the substitutions in the sixth. First pitch to Frazier's in there at the knees for a called strike. Rabio is still the pitcher for the Bobcats. Some loosening in the bullpen down there for Quinnipiac down to the right. Next pitch to Frazier. Ropes this one down the left field line, and it is foul. Just foul. On the left of the line down there, Frazier was certainly getting extra bases had that landed fair. He'll jog back to the batter's box and try again. Down in the count, 0-2. Nobody on, nobody out. Leading off the bottom of the seventh inning. Frazier's back in the box now to face off against Rabio. The 0-2 on its way. This is a... Base hit into right center field. Had to see if it was going to clear the second baseman's glove, and it did. Got into the gap in right center, and Frazier's got a leadoff single. What, what a day for Braden Frazier, Hawkeye outfielder, also a team captain. His first oh, start of the season. Good job for Frazier to lead things off at the bottom yeah. of the seventh. Oh, Hawks up 7-1 to one on Quinnipiac with Ben Tallman coming to the plate. RBI single is last time up. Comes to the plate with the black batting helmet on with a ton of helmet stickers on the backside. Gold emblems. First pitch to Tallman is on its way. Ben lays off this one as it scoots out of the zone low and away. Bio taking a good look at Frazier over there at first. He's got a decent lead. 1-0 pitch on its way. Tallman takes this one, floats in there for a call strike on the outside corner. One ball, one strike, nobody out. Runner on first for Iowa in the bottom portion of the seventh. Tallman swings at this one, lifts it foul, and out of play to the right side. A couple of off-speed pitches from Rabio lately. Tallman's one for two today with an RBI. That's the battle here. Count on the count, one and two. Frazier stands at first. One-two pitch, called third strike. Nips the outside corner, and Tallman goes down looking for the first out of the end. Frazier 
brings up the nine hitter Gable Mitchell. Mitchell looking for his first hit as a Hawkeye. Second baseman, Gable Mitchell. Let's have a sacrifice fly to right field that brought in a Hawkeye run back in the fifth. Frazier still at first. First pitch to Mitchell. Skies this one in the air to left. It's getting into foul territory. Left fielder coming on. He will dive and couldn't make the catch. Tried for a basket catch as he slid. Well, the grass meets the dirt down the left field line in foul territory, and it popped right out of the mitt. Mitchell fouls it off ultimately, and it's 0-1 with one away. Iowa leading Quinnipiac 7-1 in the bottom of the seventh. Mitchell, left-handed batter, ready for it again. This one, he pokes into the air, left center field. That's going to get down in the gap. Might get all the way to the wall. It's finally cut off. Frazier around second, headed for third. They'll put on the stop sign there, and Mitchell's in with a double for the Hawkeyes. His first hit for uh, in the black and gold for the freshman second baseman, and it's a double to the left center gap. The Hawks are in business now in the seventh. Top of the order now for the Hawks. Michael Seeger steps in. Two runners in scoring position for the black and gold, trying to add to their 7-1 to one lead here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Seegers today is 0 for 3. He does have an RBI on a sacrifice. Two runners in scoring position out there for Seegers to drive in. First pitch to him is an inside called strike. The inside corner. Seegers would have really had to turn the hips and get them moving if you want to put that one into play. No balls in the strike to Seegers. Junior shortstop for the Hawks. A one pitch on its way. Ground ball to third. Scooped up. They're going to look at Frazier, send him back to third. They throw it over to first for the out. Good play there by Quinnipiac to look back Frazier so that he couldn't score, go home, and instead go over to first to retire Seegers. He's put out five to three. Two away for the Hawks in their half of the seventh. Raider Tello will step in. Been on a couple times today. Raider. Tello. Tello was hit by a pitch in the first and singled in the fourth. Stands in with two outs, runners on second and third. Frazier's over there at third, and Mitchell's out there at second. Mitchell's got speed, so going on contact with two outs, could be able to score him with a base hit. First pitch misses in the dirt low. Tello with a slightly open stance. Outfield playing him straight up. 1-0 pitch to Raider. Swing and a miss. It's a big, hefty swing, aggressive swing, but a better pitch there from Rabio and an off speed that had Tello just a bit early. One ball on the strike with two outs, two on for Iowa in the seventh. Pitch to Tello. This is ripped into center and caught on a line. Great catch out there by the center fielder, Zimbardo, to retire the side. Great contact by Raider Tello. Just couldn't find any green grass out there. And ultimately ends the inning for the Hawks. We're through seven here in Port Charlotte, Florida. Iowa seven, Quinnipiac one. We'll bring you the eighth inning right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win, catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. 
These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Entering the eighth inning from Port Charlotte, Florida at the Snowbird Baseball Classic. John Leo here with you presenting Hawkeye Baseball. Game number two of the season for Iowa. Game number three will be tomorrow morning once again against Quinnipiac. It'll be a bit earlier in the day. The game will be at uh, 9 Central Time, uh, 10 Eastern. And then the Hawks will head home. Big uh, tournament next weekend, big weekend series. We'll be down in Texas next weekend uh, against at the Round Rock Classic against uh, Sam Houston State. Preseason number one. LSU and Kansas State. Top of the eighth inning, Iowa leading 7-1 to one as McGuire Tuffy steps in. First pitch from Volker to him, swing and a miss, 0-1. Tuffy was at the plate when D'Onofrio was picked off first base to end the last inning. So he'll get another crack at it this time. Volker dealing the 0-1 pitch. Another breaking ball, foul tipped right into the glove of Tallman at 0-2. The ball's two strikes. Volker sent with the pitch. It's on its way. Swing and a miss. He gets Tuffy down on strikes to begin the eighth inning. So far, the Hawks have struck out 14 Bobcats today. 10 from Brody Brecht. Four now from Volker. Sebastian Mueller will come up now. Right-handed hitter. First pitch. This one's hit in the air to center. It's shallow, diving, and will fall in front of Huxdorf for a base hit. The ball was what was diving there. Huxdorf sprinted in but couldn't get there. Seegers was going back, and he couldn't get there either. So a base hit for Mueller and the Bobcats. One away in the eighth. Designated hitter, number six, Matt Casario. We'll bring up Tester Yarrow now with one away. Runner on first. First pitch is in there for a strike. Off speed from Volker to get things started. Top of the eighth inning, Iowa seven, Quinnipiac one. Hawks have 13 hits compared to three for the Bobcats. A one pitch from Volker is on its way. This one's lined into center. Huxdorf will move forward. He'll make the grab. Thought about throwing it back to first to get the runner there, but he got back safely. So two away now in the Bobcat eight. Now batting for Quinnipiac, the shortstop, number 24. Runner on first, two down for Quinnipiac in the top of the eighth, with Iowa winning 7-1. to one. Matt DeRosa is the batter. He's 0 for 2 today. Takes the first pitch for a strike at the knees. DeRosa struck out his last time. Volker's been nice for Iowa. Through two and two-thirds so far, he's got four strikeouts. A one pitch on its way. This is hit foul and out of play. Down to the right. No balls, two strikes, two outs. For the batter, DeRosa. Runner on first for the Bobcats is Mueller. Volker peers in for the sign. He's got it from Tallman. 
Zach feels it, deals it. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. Strikeout from Volker is fifth of the game, and he retires the Bobcats after giving up the single to the second batter of the inning. We head to the bottom of the eighth, Iowa 7, Quinnipiac 1. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Bottom of the eighth inning, Iowa leading Quinnipiac 7-1. to one, And the Hawkeyes will send Honar, Darren, and Mosley to the box in this inning. If they get any runners on, Huxdorf will be up in the box. Heart disease is the leading cause of death for men and women in the United States. Don't let any heart condition go unnoticed or undiagnosed. Whether it's a routine checkup or a complex procedure, you want expert care from specialists who know your heart condition inside and out. University of Iowa Heart and Vascular Center advanced trained cardiologists use state-of-the-art diagnostic tools and offer highly advanced, minimally invasive treatment options. It's heart care that doesn't only change lives, it saves them. Make an appointment today at uihc.org slash hbc or call 319-356-7100. Zero two. Sam Honar is the batter for the Hawkeyes. Waves at the first pitch. Down in the count, 0-1. Next pitch, swing and a miss, 0-2. Rabio is still the pitcher for Quinnipiac. No balls, two strikes. Leading off the bottom of the eighth. Iowa leading Quinnipiac 7-1. Next pitch on its way to Honar. Foul tips into the mitt. Out number one. Honar goes down on strike. Now that is for the University of Iowa first baseman, number 45, Blake Garen. Here comes Blake Garen. Second at bat as a Hawkeye. First time around had a double the left center gap. See if he can put another charge into one. First pitch to him. Off speed, taken for a strike. Comes in 0-1 now. One away in the bottom of the eighth. Swing and a miss on the 0-1 pitch. Throw in there from Rabio. No balls, two strikes to Garen. Pitcher set. Here's the delivery. Swing and a miss. Off speed, pulled the string on a change up. Two away now in the Hawkeye eight. Here comes Chase Mosley now for his second at bat of the day. He walked earlier when he was entered into the game in the sixth. First pitch to Mosley, check swing, didn't matter, called strike. Outside corner. Mosley stands with an open stance, but narrow. And he's on his toes on his front foot. No balls and one strike, two outs. Mosley takes this one just outside, one and one, evening the count. Eyeing their second win of the season on 
at the end right now, 7-1. to one. Mosley grounds this one to short, charging hard and throwing across the diamond is DeRosa. In time to retire Mosley, a 1-2-3 inning for the Bobcats defensively. And we'll head to the ninth with Iowa leading Quinnipiac 7-1. to one. Last chance for the Bobcats coming up right after this. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. To the ninth inning we go from Port Charlotte, Florida. Iowa leading Quinnipiac 7-1, to one, game two of the Snowbird Baseball Classic. We'll have game three for you tomorrow. First pitch at 9 a.m. Central Time, 10 o'clock down here in Florida. Free game will begin at 8.30 on the Hawkeye Radio Network. Iowa's going to lean on Zach Volker the rest of the way to get these final three outs. And uh, close out the Bobcats this afternoon. It'll be 9-1-2 for Quinnipiac. They'll go Seaberg, Maves, and Zimbardo. For the Bobcats, left fielder, number seven, Brayton Seaberg. Seaberg today is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Volker's ready to begin the ninth, and he rocks and winds and delivers, squaring to bunt, not able to pull it back. In fact, he fouled it off. His Seaberg fouled it into the glove of Tallman. 0 and 1 is the count. Foul tip. A one pitch on its way from Volker, lifted in the air, fouling out of play over our heads to the lap. Volker looking for another strikeout here. It's 0-2, the pitch. Grounded in between first and the pitcher's mound. Volker picks it up, underhands it over to Garen for out number one. Good start to the night. Seberg has put out 1-3. to three. Top of the order now for Quinnipiac. Kyle Mave steps in. Maves is 0-3 today, but he's put it in play. In each of his at bats, grounded out to the pitcher in the first, the second base in the fourth, and then move out to last in the seventh. First pitch from Volker is low and inside. Maeve squared to bunt and pulled it back. One ball, no strikes, one away in the top of the ninth. Iowa leading seven to one. One oh pitch on its way. Check swing, and it'll go foul down the third base line. Tello comes over to scoop it up and grab it foul. One ball, one strike, one out in the top of the ninth. Volker's done a nice job in relief of Brody Brecht, who is perfect today through five. Volker's set with the 1-1. One, one. It's on its way. Foul back to the screen. One and two. Volker's got five strikeouts today. Going for a sixth if he can get one right here. The one-two pitch on its way. Slider that dips low, in out of the zone, rather. Two and two. Two 
two balls, two strikes, one away. In the Bobcat ninth, Iowa leading 7-1. to 2-2 two, two pitch, low and outside. Dips out of the zone. Good discipline from Maves to lay off that one. Full count now for the leadoff man of the Bobcats. 3-2 pitch from Volker. Swing and a miss. He got him. The high heater sends Maves down. Sixth strikeout of the day for Volker. Two away in the ninth. Hawks are one out away from their second win of the season. How about it for the Bobcats? Number five, better Jared Zimbardo. Zimbardo is one for three today. He has the first hit of the day for the Bobcats back in the seventh. First pitch to him is inside for a ball. Prior to his double in the seventh, Zimbardo struck out twice. Nobody on, two outs for Quinnipiac. In their half of the ninth, we won't have to see a bottom score holds. Pitch in there for a strike. Upper portion of the plate, one and one now. Volker is dealing. Fox lead seven to one, looking to get to two and zero, oh, nearly season. Volker set with the one one. Here it comes. Way inside, a little bit high too. It has a spin, Zimbardo like a top out of the box. Two balls and a strike, two way. Volker ready with the two one. Here it comes is lined past the diving Tello into the left field corner. Zimbardo rounds first, headed for second. He's going to have a two-out double to keep the Bobcats alive here tonight. Good effort by Tello at third. Dive towards the line, but couldn't quite get it. And a back and another double for Zimbardo. And he stands at second with two outs in the top of the ninth. Now back, <laughs> Forty-six, right fielder, Anthony. So the Bobcats stay alive, although Iowa leading seven to one in the top of the ninth. Two away, runner on second. Here's Anthony D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio one for three today. He singled his last time up. Volker set with the first pitch to him. Low and inside gets away from the catcher, and the runner advances from second to third. A wild pitch on Volker. Just got away from Tallman enough where Ben couldn't come up and fire the runner at third. One ball, no strikes, two outs in the top of the ninth. Iowa leading 7-1. to 1-0 one. One oh pitch on the ground. Gable Mitchell dives, makes the stop, throws it over to first, and a great pick to end the game. Ho-ho! How about that for the Hawkeyes? Gable Mitchell dives to his right, pops right up. Throws it over to Garen at first, who picks it out of the dirt, and that's a hot guy winner. Iowa wins it 7-1 to one over Quinnipiac. All right, we'll enter postgame right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, Avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. The Hawkeyes win game two of their season, defeating Quinnipiac today 7-1. to one. Iowa scored three runs in the third, four in the fifth. They registered 13 hits, played clean defensively, had no errors out in the field. Quinnipiac 
able to push one run across. Zimbardo was probably their player of the game. He was two for four with two doubles. All right, we'll send it to a break. We'll recap the game when we return, including highlights. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Iowa wins it today, 7-1 to over Quinnipiac. Behind a great pitching performance by starter Brody Brecht. Let's take a look at the pitching first. Breck will get the win. He went through five innings of perfect pitching. No hits, no runs, no walks, and he struck out 10. Zach Volker came in relief. Through four innings, gave up four hits, one earned run. He struck out six. The Hawkeyes struck out 16 Bobcats today. Offensively for the Hawks, a couple of great performances. Braden Frazier was 3-for-3 three three today with a run scored in three RBIs. Kyle Huxdorf was 2-for-3 with two runs scored. Brennan DeRiggi, he was also 2-for-3 with two runs scored. As we take a look at uh, the scoring plays and some highlights this afternoon, things started off nicely for Iowa with Keaton Anthony leading things off. He hit a solo home run to give Iowa the 1-0 to lead. 1-2 pitch on its way to Anthony. Breaking ball, this one's drilled into left field. Left fielder moving over towards the wall. He'll look up, it's carrying, and it's gone! It's a home run for Keaton Anthony. A moonshot that was in the air forever. Braden Frazier would keep it going in the third inning. As Frazier hit a two-RBI double for the Hawkeyes, giving him a 3-0 lead. First pitch is fair down the line. Frazier's got a base hit. They're going to wave around DeRiggy. It bounces off the wall. DeRiggy scores. Here comes Huckstorf. He'll score on a two-RBI double from Braden Frazier. Iowa would lead 3-0 after three. They'd add to it in the fifth when Ben Tallman hit an RBI single. To Tallman. Base hit in again into left. This is a sharp line drive. They're going to hold the runner at third, but Peterson will score. And again, the Hawks with a single and another base hit to add to their lead. Offensively, Iowa put up seven runs, but they had great defense along the way in the seventh inning. Volker with a great pickoff move to erase the runner over there at first. 7 0 lead over Quinnipiac. Three balls, two strikes. The pitch to Tello. This is a high chopper on the ground to short. Scooped up, thrown over to first in time to beat Tello by a step and retire the side. A good at bat for Raider, but he's put out 6-3 to three to conclude the fifth. And to close the game, a nice defensive effort from Gable Mitchell to seal the 7-1 to one victory for Iowa. 1-0 pitch on the ground. Gable Mitchell dives, makes the stop, throws it over to first, and a great pick to end the game. Ho-ho! How about that for the Hawkeyes? Gable Mitchell dives to his right, pops right up, throws it over to Garen at first, who picks it out of the dirt, and that's a Hawkeye winner. Iowa wins it 7-1 to over Quinnipiac. The Hawkeyes win it 7-1. to We'll be back tomorrow, but first we'll hear from assistant coach Marty Sutherland coming up right after this. Final break. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. 
that knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down, not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Defeats Quinnipiac today, seven to one. We're joined now by assistant coach Marty Sutherland. Coach Sutherland, uh, pretty complete performance. Uh, just your general thoughts on the game today? Well, obviously it starts on the mound, and, and the effort Brody gave us uh, from the get-go. He sets the tone. So um, just a great job by him, and certainly took the bulls by the pull by the horns and just flooded the strike zone. I mean, ten walks, ten punch outs, no walks. I mean, the whole staff. We struck out sixteen and didn't walk a batter. And, on a day like today with the wind blowing in, um, it kind of neutralizes the offense. The amount of free bases you give is a story. We only gave one up in the last inning. So just a great job overall, but started with Brody and Zach on the mound giving us a tremendous effort. Offensively, how about Braden Frazier today? He's probably the star of our game uh, with the hitting performance that he had. Team captain, nice to see Braden have a great game. Absolutely, and really the last month leading up to the first trip here, Braden's really been swinging it well. We were lucky enough to get outside a couple times with, with uh, some scrimmages, and Braden really swung it. So he obviously carried it right over into today. So super happy for him. Um, but just some balance. Huck had another good day at the plate, had some bad luck on the double play. Um, you know, we'd like to capitalize on a couple more opportunities that we had to score. But overall, on a tough day, you know, to score runs with the way the wind was, just really happy overall with our offense and, and you know, the at bats in general. Looks, looks like the guys are having fun, Coach. Well, you hope so. I mean, this is everybody uh, is ready to go. They put in a lot of time and effort to get to this place where they finally get to play competition, and and everybody kind of keeps, you know, starts keeping score. So um, we got a great group. I mean, they're fun to be around. There's energy. There's effort. Um, you know, and we just got to keep keep giving our best effort every single day because that's what it'll take. All right, coach. Congrats on the win. Thanks for your time. Thanks, John. All right, that was assistant coach Marty Sutherland giving his thoughts on the Hawkeye winner today. Iowa takes down Quinnipiac 7-1. to one. We'll do it all again tomorrow. It'll be a 9 a.m. first pitch central time. The Hawks and the Bobcats get after it again. Iowa and Quinnipiac as we wrap up the Snowbird Baseball Classic tomorrow morning from down here in Port Charlotte, Florida. Thanks to our listeners today. Look forward to hearing from you tomorrow and presenting more Hawkeye baseball to you. Thanks to my great board op back in Jeff City. Brock, you did a great job today. Thank you very much. We'll say so long for now. This is John Leo with Iowa Baseball, where Iowa knocks off Quinnipiac 7-1. to one. We'll talk to you tomorrow, Hawkeye Nation. Have a great night. Hawkeye Baseball has been brought to you by Homewood and Home 2 Suites, preferred hotel of the Hawkeye Radio Network, Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association, and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. When corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Oak Knoll, an active life care community. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. And by Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.